Okay, today we're going to talk about relays, switches, fuse panels. Um, I think the first thing I'll do is let's talk a little about how a relay works uh, before we get into the wiring. Let me just bring you in a little closer. Okay, this is a typical 12 volt automotive relay. They're used in tons of applications. We use them all the time in the side-by-sides or ATVs. Um, you can find them on Amazon. It's just a 12 volt relay. Now inside of this, I broke one open so you can see, we can take the cover off and all that's inside is a magnetic coil with a plunger and these two little contacts over here where it goes back and forth between the contacts. So what happens is when you apply power and ground to the coil, it's like a solenoid. It pulls on the little plunger that's in the middle of this coil when the magnetic reaction happens and it pulls this over to make contact. So the way a relay works is, is when it's sitting here with no power, okay, if you look at it, it comes in through pin 30, whatever, you know, if you're moving 12 volts to an accessory, it comes in through pin 30, and while it's sitting at rest, it's going to go out through pin 87A. And 87A is the resting spot where it's touching the contact. Now, as soon as you give it 12 volts, it's going to suck that pin in, and then it's going to change the connection. Pin 87A is no longer going to have voltage, and pin 87 is going to have it. So that when you activate the relay, all it's doing is, is diverting the power from one pin to another. That's all that's inside of these, is a coil and this little arm that moves back and forth. So, if you look at this diagram here, okay, this is what's going on inside of the the relay okay this is that little magnetic coil and it's got a plunger that goes in and out when you apply electricity the plunger then moves this arm think of this arm right here as as it's on a hinge okay so when you apply ground to 85 and 12 volts to 86 that activates the coil the coil either depends on the relay design, whether it pulls the plunger or it pushes the plunger. In this diagram, it pushes the plunger. So ground, power applied, coil, plunger comes out and moves this arm over here to 87. So that's all the relay is. It's like a little electronic switch, okay? This is your electronic switch arm, and this is your coil that moves the arm back and forth. And that's, that's how simple these are. Now, if you look over here at this side, this is what the bottom of all uh, five-pin relays look like and how they are marked. You can see one right here. They all follow that same diagram, okay? Pin 85 is always the chassis ground, okay? Pin 86. Now, pin 86 needs 12 volts because when you give ground and power, that's what makes the coil react. So, this 12 volts that comes in, this one usually is coming from your switch. Your switch turns on, gives this 12 volts, and the relay reacts. You shut your switch off, the 12 volts leaves, the relay doesn't react. All right, so now that that's how you turn the coil off and on or turn the relay off and on is just through 85 and 86. Now pin 30 that's whatever wire you want to feed to your accessory. Normally it's 12 volts. If you're going to feed 12 volts to an accessory okay you would put the 12 volt wire here okay while the relay is sitting still doing nothing remember 30 and 87 are connected. We talked about that over here. So that means the pin comes in with 12 volts and it would come out of here with 12 volts while it is sitting here doing nothing without applying any power. The reason for that is is sometimes you have to have 
power going to something and when you disconnect the power that makes a change in the item but it's not used very often um, only in, in more sophisticated setups do you really use 87A. 87A is usually just not used, especially in what we're doing in side-by-sides, ATVs, things like that. Okay, so you've got your 12 volts coming in. Then you flip the switch. Power goes here, ground goes here, the coil moves this bar over, and now 30 is going to 87, and feeding out through that pin is the 12 volts you have on 30. Now... A lot of people may say, well, why am I even using a relay if all of it's doing is moving the 12 volts to the item? Well, most of your switches are only guaranteed up to 10 or 20 amps. Let's say you're running a, a big light bar, and the light bar needs more amperage than the switch is capable of, which is the case with most uh, switches. Here's a switch that comes with some of the better Nylite wire harnesses for the big lights and you'll see this switch is 12 volt 20 amp yet they want you to use a 40 amp fuse on their lights so when you buy one of their wire harnessing kits it's got one of these relays pre-wired in it but the reason is is that 30 is getting a much fatter wire that can handle much more current than the the normal switch could so you've got like a 12 or a 10 gauge wire going in here and you've got a 12 or a 10 gauge wire going out of here because these small 12 volt relays, they generally handle 30 to 40 amps. If you want to do more than 40 amps, then you need to step up to a bigger relay. But your switch can always stay the same because it's using minimal amounts of electricity to make that coil move. So when you do like your light bar, your big fat wire comes in here, your big fat wire comes out of here, and that goes to 87 goes out to your light bar. 30, you're going to need to put a fuse at the battery where you're picking up that current. Okay? And that's another thing. You can run pin 30 directly off the battery as long as you put a fuse in line to run any accessory you want. The 12 volt side, while it usually will use your rocker switch, you could have it on your ignition. So when you turn your ignition forward, it gives the 12 volts. There, you know, as long as this sees 12 volts, it knows what to do. How you give it the 12 volts, it really doesn't matter whether it's ignition switch, rocker switch, or however you want to do it. So that gives you an idea of how a relay works. They're very, very simple. Um, let's say you don't want to use pin 30 for 12 volts. Let's say what you're supplying is something that needs 5 volts. So you have a 12 volt to, you know, 5 volt converter in there, and then you run the 5 volt line here, and then the 5 volt line comes out and goes to whatever you're doing. 30 accepts whatever wire you want to give it. You could have it give it a ground instead of a positive because this just feeds through to 87A and 87. All it is is a pass-through, like a switch we mentioned over here. So that's how a relay works. Um, and they're very easy to wire up, as you can see. Um, they sell pre-made harnesses for them that will just plug in. And because of the way the pins are laid out, you can't plug the harness in wrong. Um, the only thing that I can tell you is, is when you order relays and you look at the bottom they're going to pretty much be laid out exactly like we discussed here. But always look to make sure. I made this chart a while ago, and I just posted it up on the wall in the shop, so every time I pick up a relay, I look to make sure that this is pin 30, because not that I've ever come across one, but I've come across all kinds of things with switches and other things where they don't follow a standard or, you know, but 99, I, I, I've never come up, against one of these that doesn't have that wiring configuration. So that's how relays work. Now we'll talk about rocker switches. Okay. This is a post from a Nylite. Uh, a Nylite. Let me, I have to back out a little so you can see this. Let's see. Okay, so this is a paper that comes with a Nylite harness system. 
and I'm using this because it shows you different ways you can wire the switch. Now, here's a typical rocker switch, five pin. They're almost all identical. And, and here's what you're gonna see. What you're gonna see is, is that, okay, this wiring here, where we're going to pin six, um, pin two to pin six, that's the only place you're really going to make changes. If you look, the wiring at the top for the ground is the same on either switch. Okay? I mean, they're the same switch, just wired differently. And, and on the bottom, you're going to see that's where the change is. Okay? And all you're doing is changing the LED lights. You're not changing the output to the light bar. One, this would turn on the lower LED when you turn on the key. With this one, the lower indicator light will turn on when the switch is turned on. So this basically turns on both lights when you turn on the rocker switch. This one lets your key turn on the bottom light, which is this area here that says light bar. That's so that when you start the car, if it's dark or, it, you know, you can see the word light bar lit up. And then when you push the switch, both lights light up. The top one with the picture of the light bar showing that the light bar is activated. And the bottom one still says light bar. Then when you turn it back off, the upper light goes off. So that's what you've got going on with the switch as far as all of these, these outputs. So your your let me see if I can okay so when you wire one of these up you've got basically let me see what they say they have their other one as and for, of course they don't give us markings for all of them so let me take a quick look here see what we got all right so this one right here, which is your middle pin on the left side, this one here is what gets power. You can run it from accessory, you can run it from your battery, whatever you want to do. In most cases, you run an accessory lead to this so that when you turn your key on, this pin gets power. Once this pin gets power, it'll have a little jumper. And, and let me show you. This is a wiring kit that some of these come with, okay? Or you can buy these. I think it's you buy 10 sets of these at a time on Amazon. I'll give you the link below. But these plug on basically exactly like you see. If you notice, it has the black wire with the jumper, just as it shows there, and then this would go to your ground, okay? Okay. It has the red wire with the jumper, and then that would go to your plus 12 volts. Okay, And then your bottom wire is right here. And this is your outgoing wire. This goes out to whatever accessory you're, you're using. Um, so the wire that goes out, as you can see, goes on to the bottom. So that would like go to whatever accessory. Let's say you had a dome light. So that would go to the positive of your dome light. Okay. Now, the power wire coming in goes to the pin right up above it. Okay. And then your ground goes up at the top. Now, why do they have another ground wire exactly? I'll plug these in and show you. There we go. Now, the other great thing about these harnesses is they're called quick release. They actually have a tab right here under the rubber that you can push. And when you push it, it allows you to slide the connector off. Because if you get the ones without the push release, you can break these connectors on the back of the switch. So I'll go back over here. Okay. So... This is your main ground in, this is your main power in, and this is your power out. Okay, so now, why are there two grounds? This side is generally your LEDs. 
okay? And the only LED that they care about is the lower LED. That's the only one you can really make the change on. The upper LED power is incorporated where the main power is. So that when you flip the switch, anything that you're feeding to this will also light up the top LED. All right, so the way that you can do this, and there's two ways. If you put this to that bottom pin, the minute this switch gets 12 volts, the lower LED will light up because you can see it's jumped right there. Okay, but if you want the, the um, switch to not light up until the switch is thrown, then you take this one off of here. You're going to swap these two is what you're going to do. You're going to move the single pin up to in, and you're going to move the double pin down to the output and flip it over. So now, as soon as you turn on the light, and this gets power, it will light up both lights, upper and lower. If you have it wired like this, how we currently have it, only the bottom light is going to light up when the switch gets power. And then when you flip the switch, both lights will light up. Now, the other ground on the top, it's just for the LED. If you don't want lights at all, you don't even connect it, and you won't have any lights. But that's just for the LED because you're giving the LED power so it needs a ground. Otherwise, this switch really wouldn't need grounds because you'd only be moving power. But these rocker switches, since they have LED lights, have these multiple configurations like this. So those are the two ways to wire it. And like I said, the only difference is you'd swap this straight pin for this double pin. You'd move them, and that would be the only difference. So if you were wiring this to a relay, and let's say we wanted to do it just the factory way that they have it, okay? All right, so there it is, the way that is considered, I would say that this is normal. So you give this 12 volts, and when you do give this middle wire 12 volts, the LED light bar light would come on or whatever switch, the bottom LED would come on. And then when you flip the switch, now both lights are on and 12 volts is coming out of your bottom pin. And that 12 volts is fed over to whatever accessory you're doing, like a dome light or the rock lights or or however you want to do it. So that's how that works. So once you connect power here and ground here, the switch is active. When it's up, this gets 12 volts. When it's down, this shuts off 12 volts. So let's say you're doing something like a light bar and you need to give it more current than this switch will handle. And mind you, these little harnesses that I'll give you the link to, they use 14 gauge wire on them. It, they're, they're actually nice little harnesses. And like I said, having the quick disconnect feature will help you out quite a bit. So if you were going to connect this to a relay that needed fatter wire, same exact thing. It's connected to power and ground. And then this, we'll pull the relay picture back up over here. And let me see if we're still focused on that. Go in a little down a little there we go all right so on the switch you've got power and ground that you give it okay this is your output your output of this would come to where this says 12 volts your ground you could either run another ground off this same ground wire or run a separate ground as long as they're all chassis ground from somewhere you know on the chassis and then every time you flip this switch up and this gets power, it's going to give 12 volts here. You've got a ground there. It's going to flip. It's going to take whatever wire you have in on pin 30, move it to 87, and come out. So that combined with your relay, okay, you've got, like I said, this is the exact diagram. 85 is to ground. 86 would be coming to this switch because it'll be giving it 12 volts. And then whatever wire you're using to go to your accessory, like I said, you might need to use, like, this is a piece of 12-gauge of wire here. 
okay so you might need 12 gauge wire that holds more current or 10 gauge wire so it would go into 30 and then come out 87 and go to your accessory so all this is is an electronic switch that handles more current than this and usually they use these for low current and just to switch a relay and let the relay do the hard work the current used on these is very minimal so it doesn't make a, a big difference um, now let me see what else we got here when you get switches even though the switch may come with one of those diagrams like we saw here I always use a meter and check the switches as I'm wiring them and I'll tell you why this this happens to be for a wiper washer switch that I purchased and let me see okay for those of you that don't have a meter if you buy a meter just make sure that it does continuity testing which is this little it looks like a little speaker or sound emitting down there so we turn that down to there and now it's on and all that means is is that when you touch the red and black leads together it beeps to show you that the circuits complete okay so if we take the switch we talked about before right and we hold it to the to the red output and we hold it to the red input when we flip the switch it beeps because the wire is going through the switch if I could hold it on there so that will tell you that the circuits complete I always check that because sometimes these papers that come with the switches are wrong. The switches are always wired correctly according to whatever standard they're using, but the diagrams you get sometimes are wrong. Now, Nylite, their diagrams have never been wrong. They're really fancy, printed out, they really tell you a lot. But when you get a switch that's not the usual switch, like this was for a wiper washer switch that I'm using in the side-by-side, -side, where you flip it up and it turns on the washer, the windshield washer, windshield wiper, I should say, and then it's spring-loaded at the top. So once the switch is on, you press at the top, and like that turns the wiper on, and then this pushes in further on a spring to spray washer fluid. So... I got this diagram but first I, I went to check it with the meter and since they didn't tell you what anything was okay so I found out that pin 8 is the upper light LED um, pin 2 is the lower LED pin 5 is actually your uh, positive in okay pin 7 is your ground and then it said that six would be for your windshield wiper when you turn on the switch. And it said that three would be the output for the washer. They were backwards. The washer is actually on pin six and the wiper is actually on pin three. So in this case, it wouldn't have really caused much harm. They just would have been reversed. And when I turned on the switch, the washer would have just kept spraying continuously. And I would have known something was wrong, figured it out. But sometimes these companies send you a diagram that'll actually cause a short so I always check everything with the meter with the continuity tester before I, I wire them up with Nylite I don't bother anymore because I've never had a problem um, with most of your five uh, uh, five pin rockers you don't have any problem at all it's when you get into six pin seven pin where they're doing multifunction like this six pin uh, wiper switch when you get into multifunction, that's when you have to really look at the diagram. But they're even showing you here how it works and what flips and and. But that's the only one I've really had a problem with. Um, but knowing your relays and knowing your switches, it's nice and easy. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to stop for a second and I'll start back up and we'll go over to the fuse panel and we'll talk about that. Okay, here we are. I'm going to show you this on the Wolverine 850. This is a fuse block that I put in to the Wolverine. And what we have, take the cover off here and show you. 
is all the accessories that I'm running. This fuse panel will let you have 12 power outputs fused as well as 12 ground outputs. As you can see, I have a 4 gauge wire here and a 4 gauge wire here. Power and ground. Let's pull this back a little. There we go. Alright, and then I'm feeding this power through a 120 amp relay. Now, this panel is good for up to about 100 amps, um, but relays themselves, this won't matter that it's 120 amp. I actually always go up a little bigger in size, but see the size of this relay? Okay, the relays that I was just showing you inside, let me see, let me get one and I'll show you. We'll hold this up against it and you can get an idea. You can see the difference in the size. This is 120 amp, this is a 40 amp. So once you get past 40 amps, the relays get much bigger. And it's doing the same function of this one. And if you look, it's the same thing. 85 is the ground, 86 is the positive, 30 feeds through to 87. Even though the relay got bigger, it still follows this exact wiring setup that I was showing you before. So what we have is, is now this panel runs all the accessories in the Wolverine and I want to be able to use those accessories while the Wolverine is not running. Let's say I'm out in the woods, I want to listen to the radio or it's at night and I just want the light on, I'm doing some work behind the Wolverine, I don't want the Wolverine running, I don't want the key on. So what I've done is inside the Wolverine I've put one master power switch okay, and I have that power switch running to the second battery which runs all my accessories so I never kill the first battery. So I run the power wire to the battery and I pick up a chassis ground and what is a chassis ground? Anywhere that you can attach to metal. Like I could attach to this frame piece here where this bolt is or where this one is. Anywhere there's metal it's a ground. In this particular case I went to where the factory ground was on the engine behind the starter motor and ran a piece of 4 gauge cable up to this panel and put it there. And then the power wire comes out, goes into the relay, comes out of the relay and goes down to the second battery. The switch itself is powered from the second battery so it's on constant. Okay and I picked up a factory ground in the harness here. In fact, these are the wires from the, the power switch. All right? And I wired the switch up like I had explained to you, only I used wiring method, was it B? Let me see. Okay, yes, I used wiring method B on the Nylite instructions, which is this one right here. That's where no lights come on when the switch has power because remember I just told you I have this particular switch wired to constant 12 volts. So I don't want the lights to come on until I throw the switch. So right now, even though the switch has 12 volts, there's no lights on. And then I throw the switch and both lights come on. I don't know if you can see them in the, in the light here. It's bright in this garage. And then the lights come back off. So when you flip the switch, it gives the power to the relay, which flips that arm inside, which makes the contact, which feeds the wire from the battery out to the fuse box. So then this fuse box becomes live with 12 volts once you flip that switch. Now, you still need to fuse this. The 120 amp relay is not a fuse. So if we look down here where the second battery is, let's see if I can get this so you can see it. There we go. If you look down here where the second battery is, coming off the battery, I go into this 100 amp circuit breaker and come off this circuit breaker, and that's what goes to the fuse panel because that, that panel is rated at 100 watts. Now, 
Sometimes these breakers, you'll find that they go off early, but I don't think I'm going to be using 100 amps, so we should be fine. But do after 16 years of doing car audio and all kinds of other stuff, sometimes if you've got a heavy load where you're drawing 80, 90 amps, these things will go off early. So then you'd have to step this up to like a 120 only because they're going off prematurely. They're not an exact exact thing you'll even find fuses like that sometimes one brand or fuse that says their 60 amp will go off at 50 amps and another one won't go off till 70 so um but generally these are pretty accurate so this one's a 100 amp breaker uh for that fuse panel so now we'll go back over here all right so now that you've got your power coming in and your ground you can start adding your accessories now what are these accessories doing and why are some of these fuses so low rated okay this is for my overhead light bar I only have a four amp fuse in there and I could probably get away with a two or a want maybe a one or two um, here's the power wire that comes off and where does that wire go to that wire goes to the LED switch in the dash and one of these goes to the the grounds goes to the LED switch in the dash that makes those top connections we talked about which would be right here ground in power in so power in ground in that go to the LED light bar and why do we only need a 4 amp fuse because you're only tripping a relay. Remember we talked about the LED light bars? In fact, here's a picture of a Nylite wiring system. Their switch is only triggering a relay. The relay is doing the grunt work with the heavy duty cable. That's what's actually switching the power off and onto the light bar. This is just turning the relay off and on because we don't want to run that high current through the switch. Okay, so down here by that battery, I have both of my Nylite relays, one and two, right here, and they connect to the battery, and then the wire, the positive wire from the Nylite battery, I mean from the Nylite relays, goes up to the switches. So on the back of this one that says zombie lights is my overhead light bar, so you're getting the wire from the light bar goes to the output on this switch and then the switch is getting the black ground in and the red positive in from the fuse panel okay right here you're getting your power into the switch and your ground into the switch so this is what you're wiring up you've got see it says to accessory switch power we've got it coming off the switch the the fuse panel and then we've got the ground coming in Now remember this ground just flips over to the back of the switch and that's for the LEDs okay now this is the way that I have all my switches in my panel wired only my main power switch is wired like this because we don't want it to light up while the switch is in the off position all of the other switches in my panel are wired like this which as soon as this main switch is turned on all the lower LEDs will light up saying you know light bar rock lights where the words are at the bottom that's how they're wired and then you flip that switch up both lights come on and it activates the accessory um, let me see okay so that's why we only have four amps here and four amps for the rear light bar because all they're doing is flipping a relay and a relay uses probably maybe I don't even think it uses an amp of current sometimes they use like 0.1 amps 0.2 amps sometimes you'll get 0.5 but very very small amount of current um, I just happen to have no fuses small in four otherwise I probably would have put twos in there so then as you can see then we go to a five okay and what's the five the five is for my dome lights and why is that one higher than for the big light bars because I'm not using a relay I'm using two rock lights for my dome lights you can see them right here I'm using a rock light there and there on these little mounts and those are my dome lights 
Well, guess what? LEDs use a small amount of current. If I was using, you know, old-fashioned light bulbs up there, yeah, I'd have to have a bigger fuse. It would draw a lot more current. But because the, the LEDs draw so little current, I, and even 5 amp is probably overkill in there. I haven't checked to see what the current draw is, um, but it's probably far less than 5 amps. But same thing, next to the 5 amp fuse, the power wire comes out and goes to the dome light switch, and it goes into the left side where it says accessory power, okay? And then the ground comes off, goes over to the rock light switch, and goes in here, jumps over, this one goes in here, jumps over. The wire coming out of here is the actual power for the dome lights that would go to the dome lights. Now, don't forget, you also need a ground at the dome light. So what I did, just because I didn't want to start drilling everywhere to get grounds and trying to find grounds, I bought rolls of, and here we'll walk in here and I'll show you the wire I was showing you just a few minutes ago. I bought rolls of 16 gauge, 18 gauge, 12 gauge, 14 gauge. I bought all the sizes depending upon what I was doing because I do a, little, a lot of work on side-by-sides and ATVs anyway, so I'll use it. But I bought, and again, pure copper wire, do not buy copper clad. So pure copper wire, GS Power on Amazon makes some nice wire, so I'll give you a link to that. Um, I just ran this. I went from one dome light to the next dome light connected and then just ran a whole line of this right down and, and to the switch and picked up, you know, gave it the ground, did everything with that piece of wire um, because I just didn't want to drill or do anything that was going to add more holes or create rust spots, so I just ran the wire. Um, but that's why your 5 amp fuse is higher on the dome light than on this because I didn't need a relay. They don't draw enough current to need a relay. You can just run it through the switch. Switch is good up to 20 amps. Like I said, if that thing draws 2 amps, 3 amps, and even if it did draw more than that, the fuse is going to blow at 5 amps. So you're never even going to get near the 20 amps that the switch can handle. And then you'll see another 4 was for... Um, I can't remember right now off the top of my head without looking at the panel, but it was something else weak. Now, then you get to a 10 amp, okay? What's this 10 amp running? Well, let's go take a look and see, see if I can remember. Um, let's see, ah, that's running the stereo. Now, I have, again, on that one, I haven't done a, uh, a test to see what kind of current it's drawing, but 10 amp is probably big for there, but since most cars, you know, factory fuse panels have a 10 amp fuse for your audio I put a 10 in there for now and then I'll do the current draw and see if it's too much um, because it's basically running a small interface box that I built for those of you that watch the do-it-yourself Android car stereo head unit that interface box that I built is getting power from this and then it also provides the charging for the tablet as well as everything else. So, but 10 amps is probably big. Um, but still far below what I need for a relay. Um, general consensus is if you're going under 30 amps, or actually I would say under 20, I tend to put a relay on anything that's going to use 15 amps or more because the switch just doesn't take it. Um, so... As you can see inside, I've got all my rocker switches. I've got slots for nine. I'm only using six right now. And then I've got the, the Venom power switch at the top. But all those rockers wire identically with the except of the winch switch and the windshield wiper switch. And I showed you the windshield wiper switch. The winch switch... I just replaced the Yamaha switch with, did the same wiring. Um, but again, it would it came with a wiring diagram, and you, you really got to look at that. So I think I've explained to you how to wire up a fuse panel. Um, and we've gone over relays, we've gone over switches, 
If you have any questions, just leave them below. And you probably go to my complete build at wolverineforums.com and you can see all the mods and changes and instructions I've done. Um, I'm sure you... And, and, when I write a post there, it usually includes some things that I forgot when I did this video and vice versa. There's things when I do that I forgot I said in the video. So you'll be able to to get the most information by watching this video and um, reading the post. So I will leave you with the shot of the relay diagram. And thanks for watching.